Hi, welcome to my favorite part of our virtual after hours, which is a director's cut conversation. Over the last few years, I've invited people I wanted to hear from talk about aspects of our collection or our exhibits or something about the new speed. And tonight we're talking to D Doug Meyer. Doug was born in Louisville, but left relatively young or got out, I should say. He'll tell us part of that story to study design at Parsons in New York, and then began a long and very successful career as a designer and artist himself. With his brother, Gene Meyer, Doug and Gene designed countless categories of products from socks to carpets, to housewares products, to tableware. And on his own, Doug has had an incredible career designing exhibits and art, designing interiors um, and furniture um, and art as well. In one incredibly um, important series he's done called Heroes, Doug designed an exhibit and a book of artwork that he made commemorating, commemorating some of the heroes of art and design, many of whom he knew who were lost to the AIDS epidemic in the 80s. That, that exhibit continues to travel while Doug also works on commissions for what he calls cameos, very large scale profiles made in ceramics and other materials in some of his familiar bright colors. Doug's joining us from his studio for this director's cut from his studio in New York City where you can see some of his design on the wall behind him. And I'm really excited to have Doug here because Doug has made one of the most generous gifts to the museum since the Speed reopened in 2016. And I'm sitting on one of them right now. Doug, a few years ago, contacted me and said he wanted to use his design talent and his love for Louisville and his lifelong love for the Speed to give back to us. We had several conversations and then came up with a design he's gonna talk about for two pieces of furniture and two whole seating arrangements in our enormous atrium, which has now been brought to light with color and design with these two incredible floats designed by Doug Meyer. Welcome, Doug. Thanks, Stephen. And so tell me, like, let's just try to remember, how did this conversation start? How did you reach out to us or me and say, I'm thinking about the speed and, and I'd like to design something for you? Um, that's actually a good question because I'm, I'm trying to remember how it actually happened. Um, I think it was like two years ago, and that was when I when I actually first met you. Maybe it's a little more than that. Um, I had actually come back to Louisville for the first time in over 20 years, and the the day I arrived, I, I was picked up at the airport by my childhood best friend Joyce, and my first stop, I wanted it to be the Speed, and so we came to the Speed, and I was like all excited because it was literally my favorite place to go as, as, as a child and a teenager until I moved to New York. And uh, Joyce knows you on, on, on some level and she asked for you to come down and you came down and I actually met you. So that was, that was our first introduction. And then after that, um, we had maybe I think some email communications and then you were in New York. Um, we had lunch and then we talked some more and at that point, I don't even think we were really talking about doing this specific project. Um, so however this came about, um, we, you, you were telling me um, some of the issues you were having with um, trying to get seating into the, um, the atrium area. And so I said, you know, I think I said, let me think about it and come up with some ideas. So um, it took me a while to kind of formulate because I follow the speed on Instagram and I see that, you know, way before COVID happened, every five minutes you all were doing some sort of event. You were having weddings and, 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 and openings and, and just tons of events that um, made me start thinking about how would furniture actually work in there. Number one, the scale of the, of the space is huge. Um, number two, I, I found it very important that because it, it, it's this large area with, as you can see, the staircase behind you going up and then you have this balcony area overlooking. So it also had to look really cool from above and it had to become very graphic. And you had mentioned a, a, a few pieces I, I remember that you liked. There was, there was that, that Desteed snake leather piece that was like really, this is like a huge snake in there. And those are actually really uncomfortable. And they're, they are probably twice as much as, as, as what we ended up doing. And I also needed to, to, to think in, in terms of how you're gonna move things in and out. 
because there's, there's so many um, events that you have to take stuff out of um, and bring it back in. So um, I started thinking, and maybe why don't we put up the lookbook? Um, Operations, right? While we're doing that, I'll just say, actually, when I visited New York, I was blown away because your first idea was how to redesign our lobby and gift shop area. Oh, I know. And I, I learned about the, uh, the, um, the, your passion for design because you had gone really deep and you invited me into your studio and there was a model of our museum and we hadn't even given you, I guess we'd given you a floor plan, but we hadn't helped you out a whole lot. And there you had, you had set up the speed as a sort of a playhouse on your tabletop. And you had this idea that I, I was inspired by, but said it was, it, was, it was more elaborate and expensive than we could execute at the time. And, um, but I think what I really felt then was your love for the speed. And I, and I love, I had forgotten in fact, that this was, it was your first stop on revisiting um, Louisville after so many years. And um, so I just, it's a great reminder that this museum has been part of your life for forever, basically. Yeah, it, 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 it really, really has. And um, I, I've just seen the museum grow. And, and the, the, the interesting thing about it, when, when I, I was a child, and they're, they're used to, when the museum was really small, and I used to take art classes in the basement near there, there, there used to be a, 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 rental, a, a rental gallery down there. And I would, my mother would take me there, you know, a couple of times a week, and then we just walk around the museum. And the museum, I have to say, and you know, I, I think you have done a phenomenal job with, with, with everything that you've done for the past four years that you've been there. Because the museum at the time when I was a child, uh, the, the, the director at that, that time was um, Addison Page. And you would walk in that museum and it was like you were, I mean, it was really inspiring, but it was kind of like you were in a funeral home. Because no, you, no one talked, there was, there was no noise, and, and you were just, and it, 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 it it was one of those things that always stuck with me when I would go into a museum. It's like, oh my God, you've got to be really quiet. And you, you, know, you just got to kind of be careful uh, moving around. But I, I think that, that what the speed has become is, is really inspiring. And I think it's, it's, it's kind of the epicenter for the city now as far as you know, cultural events and just, just bringing the city together, um, which I think is really exciting. So. Um, I can share it. It may be an apocryphal story about Franklin Page that, and I don't even know if it's true, but the story was that the speed would close for a couple of hours in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And so, said, well, Mr. Page, why do you close the museum in the afternoon? He said, well, the art has to rest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I think maybe he had to rest or something. Yeah, that was <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that, was, that was, and you know, I, I, what what I find so exciting about the speed now is 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 just watching, and I've been to the last two speed balls as well. Is is watching the the number of people that are actually coming into the museum for whatever whatever you guys may be doing, and it's it's just really exciting uh, getting the community in, community involved and 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 exposing the museum on so many different levels to so many different people. I, 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 cause that's what a museum should be. And, and I, you all have, have, have done that, um, in, in such a, a great way, I think. But so, so now let's talk about how you went into that crazy grab bag of inspiration in your brain and your, your life. Okay. Your life <laughs> design and, 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 and the, the various threads that came together for these great objects. Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, I, I, we start here with the, with the lookbook, and the first image is an old postcard of the uh, original building of the Speed. And you know, if anyone knows the Speed, the, the, the original building was really, really tiny, and you know, it, it, it's grown through throughout many, many decades. But um, so we start with, 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 with I just kind of just threw that in there as an opener. So let's go to the next image. When I first moved here, you would also pass a little guard box. It was very old fashioned. There was a security guard in a, in, a, in like a, you know, the, the box the size of a, a telephone booth. Oh, I, I, I do remember that. <laughs> it, was, it was on the one hand very personal, but also a little bit forbidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I think maybe that's how they wanted it back then. But, yeah. uh, um, so this first image, um, because I, I uh, one of my first thoughts about these, and, they're called floats. There's two of them, and they're 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 called floats because you named them floats because you're from New Orleans and it just made so much sense because each one of them has like nine wheels, and um, 
so I started thinking about, you know, cars and, 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 and objects that move. And so with cars, the 60s was my favorite time period for, for, for um, car design. And one of my favorite cars is the Citron, uh, the DS1 from 1969. And these were these really low cars. They were from France. And it, it, it's just kind of, I find it quite beautiful, almost like a Jaguar, but it, it, it's just kind of odd and, and bulky and kind of perfect for what, what I love. And, and just when you look at the shapes, because there's, there's, there, there, there's a lot of influences on the shape of those floats that we did. But just the, the, the oddness of this is what I really loved. Um, let's go to the next image. I always thought they were kind of like a porpoise. Yeah, <laughs> nice. exactly. Um, this next one is uh, the, the Fiat 600 Jolly from 1962. Um, and these were, these were mainly used in, in, in um, resort areas in the Caribbean and, and, and around the world. And they were, they're just once again, another kind of funky, weird, weird, weird object to me. And I love the, uh, the, the hubcaps. I love, I love the light. I love all the chrome elements of, of 50s and 60s cars, as well as the interior and the dashboard. There's a simplicity to them, which I was trying to, to put into the uh, floats. If when people come to, to the speed, you'll see the, each float is slightly different. Um, and on the sides and the front and the back of each float, they have these things that are like, I call them portals. Um, the, and each one is a different color, but they're actually mirrored, either a lime green mirror or a hot pink mirror or a, a sky blue mirror. And it, that just is kind of reflective of, of, of the idea of hubcaps and uh, headlights. Um, let's go to the next image. This is another one of my favorite cars in the world, the Kia Avanti. Um, this is the 1963 version um, the, the, done by Studebaker, but designed by Raymond Lowy, who was just a brilliant um, product designer. Um, and this, the, the car was actually made in um, Bowling Green, Kentucky in the Corvette um, uh, factory because the, the entire body is also fiberglass, just like a Corvette. So you don't really want to get into an accident with this. But well, but in Lowy, like you designed, I mean, in hundreds of different categories, right? From fountain pens to furniture. Oh yeah, to, I mean, he, he did everything. And it, yeah, it's very, it's kind of like me. It's very hard to, when people ask me what I do, I never know what to say. because they just do so many different things. But, um, and if you look at the image here on, on the Avanti, you'll see these big round headlights, which are, are very reminiscent of portals that we have uh, wrapped around the sides of the floats. And then, you know, you just look in the interior and I just, the interiors of, 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 of older cars are just their dashboards and the, the, the upholstery in them is just kind of fabulous. But, um, okay, so let's go to the next image. Um, once again, because this, I was trying to also play off of, of, of elements that the speed has. So the speed has, which I think is the next image, but we won't show it yet, is the, um, the Michael Graves Plaza Vanity from 1981, which is also the same time period as this. This is a, uh, a, a lamp called the Super Lamp by Martin Bedden from the uh, Memphis group. It was done in 1981. It was on wheels. And it just, once again, it's that, that odd kookiness that I wanted to kind of play off of with these floats. And if you you see like right behind uh, Stephen, these two poles that come up, they're, they were kind of reminiscent of these, yeah. the, these sockets here uh, in the super lamp. Um, let's, let's go up to the next one. This reference, because I'm such a fan of Memphis, but also it's mentor at Ettore Sotsas, kind of also like you just love color and playfulness and kept reinventing himself throughout his incredible career. Exactly, exactly. And, and there's, you know, like, like with Graves and stuff and, and all of Memphis, there, 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 there are these graphic elements, there, there are these art deco elements for sure. This is the Plaza Vanity, which is in uh, the collection of the Speed. Um, and I also love how, how you guys at the Speed have, the, the day that I met you, when I came back to the Speed for the first time in, in a couple of decades, you had this on display. And I, I love the juxtaposition of, of, of this very modern 
Graves piece from 81. And then it's, I don't remember what it was next to, but you know, it was, it was in one of the original, um, original rooms. And just to me, always the best, best is when you mix old and new. And the, the speed I think is, 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 you guys have just been doing a, a beautiful job of mixing. It, and it's kind of like the, the idea of what the, the Museum of Modern Art started doing when they reopened the, um, the after all their, their construction was um, not just keeping one period or one, one, one artist or one designer in, in one space where you're mixing it up and you're actually showing the influences of how something was kind of evolved in a way. And, and just this presentation here that we're doing, I'm, I'm trying to just kind of explain the evolution of the design for these floats. So let's go to the next. And next I love period. about this, just we could stay on it for a second, is that um, it's, I was like remembering that, um, you know, Scott Irvis, our curator acquired this for the collection, but Graves designed this dressing table about the same time he won the commission for the Humana building. And so I love you thinking just a couple of miles north of here, his architectural version of this, this, this dressing table. Right, no, very true, very true. Right in the corner of Fifth Main. <laughs> and you know, the, one of the great things about, I, I remember when the Humana, when, when, when he actually won, won that commission. And before that he had done, oh God, what was the building in Portland? The, 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 the museum, right? No, it was, it was a government building. Oh, I know, yeah, it had and, this kind of barrel vaulted roof. Right, and it was a big old square. And yeah. it, it, for Graves, I mean, he hated it because it wasn't successful in the sense that they ran out of money and the inside just looks like a regular office building. But that, I, 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 you know, I, to me, I found that the beauty of Humana and, and, and the Humana building by Graves is that they didn't cut corners on that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I know that they went over budget, but, you know, it, it, it's it's what he it's what he envisioned and it's what he designed. And Louisville, I think, was just so lucky to 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 get that. Um, it, it's, I've always uh, uh, loved that building. It's it, it, it's such had, a cool. Had a great patron and the collector Wendell Cherry as a co-founder of Humana. There, he knew knew what he wanted. Right, exactly. I, and and when when they did it, there was. And I'm trying to remember. I think there were five architects. That, that, that were in the in the final running. And Rizzoli had done a, a little book on it. Yeah. And it, they had all the uh, entries in there. And, and some of them were really good. I mean, I think it was kind of a, 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 a tough choice, but I'm glad that they went with Graves. Um, I have a copy of that. The story I heard, again, I'm, I'm just full of, of apocryphal stories in <laughs> conversation, was that um, however, whatever kind of jury they had to choose the winner from that, and I have a copy of that little book, um, was thrown out by Wendell Cherry, who said, I want Graves, and that's who we're going with. No, I remember his wife, Dottie, did not want Graves, and right. Wendell did want Graves, so that, that's how it actually really happened. Who knows, I'm glad we got it. Yes, exactly. Um, let's go to the next image. Um, so once again, in keeping with the spirit of Louisville, if, if, when, when someone comes and looks at these, it, it, it's kind of this, this, this abstract version of the original clubhouse of Churchill Downs with, with both the spires. And once again, right behind Stephen, you'll see those, those little towers that had those little caps on them. To me, that was, the, the, that was representative of the, the, the spires at Churchill Downs. Um, and then if you go to the next image, so in addition to the spires, kind of in between the spires, I wanted to throw in something that was also kind of reminiscent in a way of the uh, horse farms throughout Kentucky with their plank fencing. So you have this very linear kind of fence. And, and the interesting thing as I was thinking about this the other day is that, you know, these, these, these floats are very kind of COVID friendly because they do divide off, you know, you can have a group of people sitting on both sides and not have to worry about, you know, catching something. But, um, and let's go to the next image. So then combining all these things, having the, you know, the, the, the spires, then this idea of these linear kind of, because it's a fence. And then I wanted to play off of, of, of the amount of light that comes into that space. And there was, there, there was some other things, there, there were some other factors that went into it too, because that space is so large and there's absolutely 
there's no art in there simply because there is so much natural light that most things that you would be able to put in there would fade and or if you put a big old sculpture in there you couldn't really remove it when you're having events so it was trying to make these pieces of furniture really act as sculpture and and and, and function and and just doing other things. So, um, and I haven't experienced this and I've been dying to come to Louisville to see it, but when the sun is actually coming into the space and Stephen, you sent me a couple of shots one day, um, you texted me when, when the sun comes in there, I wanted it to do what this image is doing. This is from one of the corridors at the Miami International Airport, yeah. <laughs> where it, um, you have this clear, it, 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 the, 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 what I'll call the fence behind you is, is made up of um, clear colored plexiglass and also um, a few inserts of uh, colored plexi mirror. So it becomes reflective, um, it becomes sheer, and when the light hits it, it will reflect those colors onto the floor, the ground, I don't know where. I haven't seen it in person, but um, that was the idea. And they're both positioned in, in, in you know, one's, uh, they're both positioned parallel to both of the windows that are in, in, in the room. So when you're walking by or walking in, hopefully it'll have the, 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 this much grander effect than just two pieces of furniture sitting there. Um, and they're, once again, that's where they both differ because the, uh, and we worked a long time on this, and I'll talk about that in a second, on getting the sort of the prisms, the, the rainbow effect that, 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 that we have on there. This was one of the, I, I think I, I presented you with maybe four or five versions of, of yeah. how it could look. So this is one version. Uh, let's go to the next one. This is another one. This was, this is, this is, this is, it was kind of like weird, funky, crazy, using some 80s uh, mica that um, I knew you were never going to do. So it's OK. <laughs> um, Sometimes I don't know that. Well, you've just answered my question whether designers put an extreme version of something in as knowing that then you'll choose the one that's one step in. Yeah. <laughs> or, or kind of, yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, you, but you never, I, I, I learned a long time ago, you never put in something that you would never want to be done. Okay. Because that's the one that everyone always, always goes to, and then you're just about to have a nervous breakdown. But, um, okay, let's go to the next one. <laughs> um, this one I, 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 I liked. It was, it, was, it was just kind of funky enough, but it could have maybe worked. But the, the idea, another, another idea that you, you or thought that you had was we, we also wanted to play off of the um, branded museum colors. And I can't remember how you all described that, but because uh, there, 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 there's a blue and a, and a pink. And, and, and um, so when you all sent me that, that booklet uh, of your all's template, um, I, I really played off of that. Let's go to the next one, which is, this was the version that is kind of closest that I presented to what our final um, floats are like. And the interesting thing too is we, we were, our hands were tied on so many levels when we first started to, to, to choose the materials and the colors. Um, and we worked with, um, um, oh my God, I, I'm drawing a blank on the name of the-, the, the Solid light. Yeah, Solid Light, the, a, a, an amazing place there in Louisville that um, built these. And we worked with them and um, they did a phenomenal job, I think, um, just working through some of the, you know, the issues and, and the mechanics of this. And so... And we like this in part because some of the other ones had, um, you know, you were really great about thinking about all the uses of the um, of the space, and we want to leave them here for things like after hours when we have it again for other events. Although we know a wedding may not want them here, right? I think when we settled on these, um, frankly, a little more subdued colors on the base, it was that they also kind of did feel like they needed to be grounded on this gray terrazzo floor, and there's so much of it that some of the others had this incredible energy, but almost seemed to just maybe be vibrating and bouncing around the right. space. And these had this, um, because I think Pulapot did such a great job in the space, which is formal, but also very open. And, and these felt that they responded in a playful um, and appropriate way. 
Right. They, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And um, and then the uh, the other the other thing the other sort of uh, another one of the restrictions we had was Ural's elevator. Yeah. We, we had to make sure that these would comfortably fit into the elevator. And and just like a car, like if you can see at the very bottom. I, I probably can't see, but I, at the bottom we use rubber bumpers. So when they're being moved, especially into the elevator, it's, you know, and if, if someone's driving and they're not doing a good job, it, 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 it'll, it'll at least save it um, and protect it. Um, so let's, let's go, to, I don't even, I can't remember, what, what's the next slide? Oh, okay, this was just, <clears throat> this was just describing how um, various elements. Actually design it, yeah. Um, and, Let's let's go to the next one. Yeah. So so this is this is where we uh, had to kind of end up because the the base we were dealing with um, only probably four cho choices of of, of, of mica um, uh, siding, and then we had limitations on the plexi and the mirrored colors, um, and then the powder coat colors. There's there's a lot of materials in this thing, and then there's 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 the cushions and, and the naga hide and the powder coated metal and uh, wood dowels and then rubber wheels and just um, and chrome for the uh, portal frames. So um, we finally, and that took a while too because there were there were issues with that too. Um, they they let's go to the next one. Um, this was this was the only image that I could find when I was putting this together. But um, on both my end and your guys' end, um, we were playing with all the uh, plexi colors when we were trying to figure out the, uh, the, the 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 pattern that we were going to do for really that sort of prism effect, um, and just playing with the the mirrors as well as the clear and. How those are actually done is there are um, the the plexiglass that's colored in in is is one quarter inch thick, and then we have they're sandwiched. Everything is then stacked, and they're sandwiched in between clear quarter inch um, plexiglass, and then they are fastened on the sides, bottom, and top. So um, it kind of looks like they're floating. And um, let's go to the next one. Love how you're, you're inspired. Clearly, it's so great to hear this story because you're inspired by ideas and color and mechanics. Like how actually yeah. works <laughs> is as interesting as, as where it came from. Well, the only way, you know, when, I, when I'm designing and designing something, I have to be able to build it in my head. Yeah. And if I can't build it, then it, to me, it, I just, it just kind of can't be done in a way or I'll try to find out if, if something can be done a certain way. And then I... I genuinely have to build the thing, design it, and then I kind of see it. And then, you know, it usually looks like how I, when it's, when a piece is finally done, it looks like how I, I kind of, you know, crazily envision something. You can see them. I think the next picture is actually the one. Oh, oh, this oh is yeah. This, this, this just, this was one of, of one of many showing um, the, the layout of this and, and, and the size of each one and, what would be mirrored, what would be cleared. And, and, and you guys did a, did a great job because you all were really uh, really on top of this and, and bringing it out down into the space and, and seeing how the light played off of it. And there were a couple colors you weren't, you, you, you weren't convinced about. So we kind of, we switched those out and- um, We may have debated this, this stage more than any a lot. I know, <laughs> but uh, so, okay. So let's look, let's go to the next one. And this this is this is one of the shots that you sent me. So um, this is um, I'm assuming how you know during during throughout the day when when the sun is coming in, what it, what this does um, on the floor. Um, I, and I, I I love that. And and I also love the idea of seeing it from above as well, or just when you're walking by. It's quite it it, it it's quite intriguing as to like what what it is. These these these. I can't even remember the size, the length of them. Are they uh, 12 11 feet? 11 feet, um, which was I, the largest we could make it. So, so you know, when you think of them, and you're, you know, we calling we're calling them the floats. They, they really, to me, they really are like the, the these cars, and that's that's what I, I I love about them. And then we also um, 
early on, we, we had chosen these um, chairs from Noel. There's uh, each float will have a set of six chairs that will kind of float around them. And then they'll have um, uh, side tables so people can have drinks and, and, and whatever they want to put on them. Um, and it just, once again, it expands the amount of space that these take up. And yeah. you can see, like, you can see two of the blue chairs. Uh, yeah. where and we're waiting on the tables. The supply chains, as you know, many things have been delayed this year, but they're on their way. Um, and we want, we hope people, and you wanted people to really use them creatively. So if a child obviously can climb on the floats, um, you can bring a group of five people together. And in fact, actually, it's, that's as well suited for the era of the coronavirus as before, because now if a pod, a family of two wants to come sit together, or a family of eight can come sit together, as you said, we have cleaning people come through on the hour when we're open now, can swipe the stuff down very quickly, um, keep it sanitary. And so one of the great things is nothing about our use of these have changed because of our, even though a lot about the museum has changed right now, when you'll come, you'll see we're time ticketing, we're limiting capacity pretty severely, um, but nothing, but the, the floats have worked on. I wanna thank you for letting me, um, while they're, it's not the permanent name, as you said, I kind of invoked my own childhood in New Orleans because I said, oh, these are like Mardi Gras floats. They're processional, they're, they're decorated, there's a story behind them, they're kind of thematic, um, and they feel like, and they're on a great big, really big scale. Um, right. And those floats are vehicular as well. But we do hope to, you, you encouraged us, and we are looking for the right way to have a competition to actually name them. Good, okay. So and ginger or something else, as you pointed out, they, they aren't exactly the same. Um, they each have their own personality, and we'd love to start um, having them become part of the Speed family with a name. Um, but we need to wrap up in a minute, but I do want to say, Doug, you talked about how you came, you know, you started seeing the Speed in a new way a couple of years ago when you came back to Louisville. Let's talk about when you left Louisville, and, and in about two minutes, everything that happened between then, you left at about 15, right? Or you got yeah. it? Yeah, I, I, I graduated uh, early, and literally the day I the day after graduation, I moved to New York. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I went to uh, Parsons. Um, I was in the fine arts department there. And um, from there, oh my gosh, I, I you know, I, I, like I said earlier, I've just done so many different things in, in my career that um, I, I never know how to describe it. Uh, I, you know, I'm an artist. Um, I'm a designer of a lot of different things from installations to interiors to, um, a lot of different product categories from rugs to fabric to, to furniture to to wallpaper to tile um uh, what else um i you know i i make I, now what are your what are your projects in the current um, what, what, what are my current projects um I'm, I'm actually doing this really cool series um let me let me show you this <laughs> this is when 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 the 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 lockdown happened. Um, I started um, literally the next day creating these like weird things that I call um, isolation bunkers. Uh -huh. And you can see, I don't know if you can see inside, but there's actually little figures representing, you know, yeah. isolation people. This one is kind of, you know, an homage to, 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 to Louisville because of the horse. But the other thing too is it's anatomically correct. But um, so I'm doing all these like strange bunkers and, and um, I'm working on those. I, the, the bizarre thing is I'm actually more busy now than I was before the, the COVID hit. Um, I have tons of commissions. I'm working on several um, uh, rug collections um, and then several are coming out actually at the end of this month, a, a, a tile collection coming out. Um, wow. What else? Um, I would encourage people to follow you on Instagram, just as you follow the speed, because you can keep up with your varied production. And, um, you know, I just want to say, I always say this about artists, that I think artists in some ways are the most generous and generative people around when you think of what it takes to, to want to start life every day with a blank canvas mm -hmm. and then go to the world, be so passionate that you want to share with the world your particular vision of it. Um, it's actually, I think, one of the greatest acts of generosity there are. And I haven't made it, I wanna make it explicitly clear how grateful I am because your act towards the speed is one of the most um, abundant acts of generosity and creativity I've seen since I came here. Um, we have a lot of people who write checks generously to us, but no one has yet 
has volunteered to, um, to fill our building with color and love and creativity. And I really want to thank you for that kind of gift. It inspired me. It gave me a lot of confidence about the work we're doing here, that you saw it in us. And um, I just want the world to come and enjoy these, to watch the light filter through them, to climb on top of them, to help us name them, um, to make them, to embrace them. Um, the way you've embraced the speed and our vision for how it can bring our shared hometown together. Well, well, I, I want to say thank you for allowing me to do this because it, it was really a, a great honor because the speed, as you had said in the beginning, has always been, a, in, in a strange way, a, a big part of my life. And for me to actually create something and have it there is, is just really cool to me. And thank you for that. When it's, you're, you, you know, we both feel grateful when you're, when it's safe to travel, come back and see them. They're, they're not going anywhere. They do move, as you can see. They're not, they're not locked down right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, I want to show people that, but um, um, we have so much more we could talk about, including Andy Warhol and your mother's gallery on Main Street, but the floats were a great topic. And thanks, Doug, for joining us. Be well and thanks. come back to Louisville soon. I will. Okay. Take care. Thanks, Bye -bye. Steve. Bye-bye.